today we are going to talk about something very interesting and that is how to culture these seven bacteriophages. So it has a lot of things to do because bacteriophages, phage, who eats, phagocytosis, did you, phage, this word is used whenever someone or something is engulfed or get eaten or get feeded on, okay? So bacteriophages, it simply means any virus that feeds on bacteria. It doesn't mean any virus, but bacteriophages are viruses that feeds on bacteria. So I'm going to grow these viruses and I'm going to show how to do that. So first, before actually showing you the whole procedure, let me explain you some important steps of it. So first, we are, I'm going to use a virus T7. It's a bacteriophage and the host is going to be E. coli B. Host is something on which the virus is going to be feed on. For example, corona, for corona, we are the host. It's like it's going to come inside our body and, and is going to use our body's machinery. So we are the host and I don't know if it's a guest or unwanted guest or he, the virus is not a host, it's we. Any machinery the virus is going to use is going to be the host. So E. coli V is the host. So how are we going to start? So first, to bring the virus, we need the host. So I'm going to culture E. coli V. So I'm going to incubate it at 37 degrees Celsius for two to three hours, or we can say until the, the flask in which that we have the E. coli V turns out like turbid. And the media I'm going to use is DSB. Uh, DSB is not hard to make. You just need DSB <laughs> broth powder and you just need to follow the instructions as different companies, different brands have different instructions. Like some want you to add 30 grams of DSB broth in a liter of deionized di water. Some want you to add a different amount of it depending on the nutrient and depending on the constitution of that agar powder. So you just need to follow the descriptions and you just need to make like, I feel like 150 ml of DSB in a flask is a really good amount. And then you need just need to add a little bit of E. coli and then just let it incubate and let it grow for like 37 degrees Celsius at, for like two to three hours or until you see turbidity on it. So to show you the differences that happens, I'm going to make like two flasks of E. coli B. And in one flask, I'm going to I'm going to refer the first flask as a control, and the second flask I'm going to use to culture my viruses. And we are going to compare those flasks like all the time, just to show you that what kind of difference happens when where viruses grow and what happens when and the, like if there's a fault in your system, like if there's a problem with the media, it's not growing, go, and then the virus is not going to grow in either of the flasks. So you can actually compare and see that if you're going the right way or not. So always make a control whenever you like culturing viruses. Like not always, depend on the budget you have, depending on the viruses kinds you have. So, but most of the time having a control is a really good option. The other thing we're going to do is after two, three hours or until the time I see turbidity in that flask, then I'm going to add T7 farge to it. So the amount is for every 100 ml, I am going to add one ml of T7 farge. Okay, so now you're questioning like, okay, so we're going to use, we're not using 100 ml, we're using 150 ml. So the math is kind of easy. So rather than adding one ml of T7 in the flask, add 1.5 ml in the flask. I hope you're getting, like you're getting it. If you're not, once you wanna see the procedure, you will actually, actually be able to connect those threads and will understand what I actually mean. Oh, I used actually a lot of times. Okay, so after that, what you're gonna do is you need to filter sterilize it. Great. Not filter cell like add culture E. coli B for two three hours or until the time the the media turns turbid. Then 
inoculate 1.5 ml for 150 ml of the of the medium t7 patch into the medium and leave it for another two three hours why because let the t7 patch feed on e coli b and get activated and then they kind of divide and grow so when t7 patch will get activated you're going to see the solution will turn out back to the normal like it's not going to be turbid because the t7 fudge has already feed it on the e coli b so there's no e coli b there's no turbidity so now when you want to compare your t7 fudge flask with the control one you're going to see that control flask is still turbid but the t7 fudge is it's not turbid anymore because the t7 fudge feed it on those e coli b once you're done with that procedure then you need to filter sterilize it and you need to filter sterilize it for like two times one time you're going to use the pore size of 0.4 point mm, 0.4 <laughs> i need to look at my stuff like what i have it's like yeah 0.45 micrometers and then once you filter sterilize that then you're going to filter sterilize again but this time the pore size, pore size is going to be 0.22 micrometers so it kind of helps at removing the debris, the cell debris, and because we want T7, the virus, and viruses are the extremely minute structural, I don't know, like living or dead, because it lies at the boundary of living or dead. If it's outside our body, it's dead. It's inside the body. It's using the machines. It's living. So it's your choice. <laughs> no, it's like not our choice. It completely depends on the condition the virus is in. So it's an organism. I think that word is not that controversial. And once you do that, you just need to filter sterilize it and then save it. Then you can just put it in a refrigerator and it's ready to use for your experiments. I hope it helped and now let's see the process.